And so they think that nothing caused an explosion at the beginning that created order and created our universe. Young Earth creationists forever misunderstanding the cosmos. Hey guys, this is Matt Powell. Well, hello, Matt. Long time no see. Or should I say, long enough for me to forget why I avoid making videos about you twice in a month. Did I just say that out loud? Well, it's out in the universe now, like a bad tattoo or a tweet you regret. Yeah, I could snip it out in the edit, but let's be honest, I'm far too lazy for that level of commitment. So what's on today's agenda, young Matthew? Spill the tea. Or should I say the macchiato? <laughs> subscribe. If I was to tell you that there was a gigantic explosion, one of the first things that you would ask me is, well, what caused it? Oh, St. Matthew, patron saint of, well, not compassion, apparently. The first thing out of my mouth would be, is everyone okay? You know, because I actually care about my fellow human beings. Yeah, beans. I said beans. You know, that magical fruit that makes you body burp. Mm -hmm. Then I'd wonder if this all went down at Dinosaur Adventure Land. Why, I hear you ask? Because a guy's got to have dreams, and mine involves velociraptors in fedoras. So what's the deal, Matt? Missing the good Samaritan gene, or just too busy hunting for evidence of God? If I responded back to you and said, well, nothing caused it, nothing caused this explosion, you would say that's crazy. I'm going to play dumb, yeah? and act like I have zero idea about this explosion you're hinting at. What explosion, Matt? Enlighten us, please. It's not like you've been going on and on about it like a broken record, and we've all pieced together which kaboom you're referring to, but let's pretend we're all in a suspense thriller and you're about to drop the plot twist of the century. So come on, Matty boy, spill it before we all explode from anticipation. But if you look at the Big Bang Theory, and the atheistic perspective of it. According to them, since there is no God, nothing would have had to create everything. Ding, ding, ding. And the Matt Powell Show is officially on air. Oh, young Matthew, when you say nothing, you make it sound like a big something, don't you? See what I did there? Wordplay, my friends, wordplay. Now, not to drop any spoilers or anything, but let's get one thing straight. Atheists aren't the ones saying that nothing caused the Big Bang, but I don't want to get ahead of myself or steal your thunder. So go on, Matt, enlighten us with your cosmic wisdom. And so they think that nothing caused an explosion at the beginning that created order and created our universe. Whoa, 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 pump the brakes there, Matt. You're making it sound like we are saying the Big Bang was some cosmic magician pulling the universe out of a hat. Oh no, what we're actually saying is that the Big Bang is like the ultimate season premiere of the universe. You know, the reality show 13.8 billion years in the making. It started with a singularity. Think of it as the ultimate plot twist and then boom. Universe expansion in HD. And let's not forget the VIPs. Redshift, cosmic microwave background radiation. They're like the paparazzi photos that prove it all went down. But you, my dear creationist friend, you're the one saying God did it, as if God's some cosmic MacGyver fixing the universe with duct tape and a paper clip. By your logic, if God is nothing and he created everything, then you are the one who's basically saying nothing created everything. How's that for a plot twist, Matt? If they can't even get their own creation story uh, somewhat based in logic or science or reason, I don't know why people should put any trust or any uh, faith in what they say. Exactly. We are not the one throwing darts at a board of cosmic theories. We've got science, logic and reason on our side. It's not like we're scribbling down ideas on a cocktail napkin and saying, ah yes, that's how the universe started. We've got evidence. Ever heard of cosmic background radiation? It's like the universe's baby pictures. It's so adorable. So what's the issue with atheists and the Big Bang? Why does understanding that the universe is 13.8 billion years old get under your skin so much? It's not like acknowledging the Big Bang suddenly makes you an atheist, Matt. That's like saying understanding gravity makes you Newtonian. Come on, there's no cosmic law that says understanding science and not believing in God are mutually exclusive. And so to say that nothing exploded and created everything, that nothing caused an explosion is absolutely pathetic. Oh, Matt, 
ma ma you see there was no explosion it's not like the universe was a giant firework that someone lit on the 4th of july it was a cosmic event and if you'd crack open a book that isn't the bible you'd know this but i get it young earth creationism is like your comfort food now if i wanted to be nice which spoiler alert I don't. I'd say you're just confused. But let's call it what it is. You and your like-minded pals are basically liars. To yourselves and everyone else around you. It's like building a house of cards on a foundation made of jelly. If your entire belief system is a lie, then everything you say to defend it is also a lie. And that, my friend, is not just wrong, it's pathetically wrong. How's that for irony? The second problem that I have with the Big Bang Theory and that science has with the Big Bang Theory is this idea that there was nothing and then an explosion occurred and that there was something. Oh yeah, counting, that elusive skill. It's like trying to count the number of times you've misunderstood the Big Bang, Matt. You think it's like some cosmic microwave that just popped out a fully formed universe with a side of fries. Well, no, it isn't. So, Matty boy, maybe it's time to update your cosmic cookbook because your recipe for understanding the universe is missing a few key ingredients. You know, like facts. Mathematically speaking and scientifically speaking, the first law of thermodynamics states that matter cannot be created or destroyed. Ah, the singularity, the ultimate cosmic enigma. It's like the Rubik's Cube of the universe, mind-boggling and defying our attempts to solve it with our current understanding of physics. It's not that the Big Bang was some rebellious teenager breaking all the laws of physics. It's like those laws just don't cover the extreme conditions of the singularity. It's like trying to use a butter knife to cut through steel. You're gonna need a better tool. And that's where quantum gravity and string theory come in. The superheroes of modern physics swooping in to save the day and hopefully give us a more complete picture of what the Big Bang actually did. And let's talk about arrogance for a second. Creationists are like that guy at a party who claims to know everything about wine tasting after drinking one glass. God did it, they say. Like it's the ultimate mic drop. But the rest of us, we're humble enough to admit that we don't have all the answers. So the first two flaws with the Big Bang Theory is this idea that nothing caused the explosion and that the explosion created time, space, and matter. And what qualifies you to point out the flaws in anything? Apart from the flaws in your own ideas, of course. The Big Bang isn't some cosmic firecracker that went off and poof, universe. First, it set off the expansion of the universe, like the first domino in a chain reaction. And as things began to cool down, fundamental particles like quarks, electrons, and photons came into play. Think of them as the building blocks in a cosmic Lego set. And these particles eventually got their act together to form atoms, primarily the dynamic duo of hydrogen and helium. And what did those atoms do? They went on to form stars, galaxies, and all the other cosmic stuff we see today. So, while I may not have a PhD in matology, I do have a knack for seeing when someone is full of shit. And Matt, you're overflowing, pal. And so we know that matter cannot create itself, and so an outside force would have had to bring matter into existence. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Matt, when you bring up the Bible in a scientific discussion, it's like showing up to a Formula One race on a tricycle. Yeah, it's a mode of transportation, but it's not gonna get you anywhere fast. The Bible is many things, but a scientific textbook, it is not. It's like using a romance novel as a guide for heart surgery. Entertaining? Maybe, but not exactly reliable for the task at hand, is it? We've got scientific books, journals, and actual scientists who've spent years studying the universe, and they're not going around quoting Genesis to explain the Big Bang. So when you wave your Bible around in a scientific debate, it's like wearing a neon sign that screams, I'm out of my depth here. Yeah. And so God set the world in motion. God created the heaven and the earth. And God was the force that did that. And you either have to believe that someone created something out of nothing, or that nobody created something out of nothing. The B word again. Look, when we're talking science, belief takes a back seat. It's like inviting a mime to a debate. Might be interesting and funny to watch, but it's not gonna contribute much. Science is all about evidence. You read it, ponder it, and then you say, hmm, 
So that's how the cosmic cookie crumbles. And if you're religious, you've got a choice to make. Do you go with the magic man in the sky narrative, who's got a love-hate relationship with humanity? Or he loves you, but he's gonna send you to hell if you do anything to upset him and make you suffer for the rest of eternity? Or do you go with what the evidence shows us, which is a universe formed through natural processes over billions of years? So let's keep the B word out of the science classroom and stick with the E word evidence because at the end of the day that's what's going to give us the real answers not ancient texts or wishful thinking and so those are the first two problems with the big bang theory and a third problem with the big bang theory is this idea that it that it created order the big bang did not create order in the sense of a pre-arranged organized structure it set in motion the physical processes that led to the formation of the universe's current structure. Things like the formation of atoms, stars, galaxies, and eventually the large-scale structure of the universe. And over time, physical laws like gravity, electromagnetism, and nuclear forces guided the evolution of the universe, creating a form of order from the initial chaos. But this is not absolute. The universe also exhibits randomness and entropy, which are integral to its ongoing going evolution. So while the Big Bang itself was not an event of order, it initiated the conditions and obeyed the physical laws that led to the organized structures we all observe today. And that somehow this explosion out of chaos produced order and planets that are in a perfect orbit. Young Earth creationists forever misunderstanding the cosmos. They think we're saying the universe is like a pop-up book. Just open it to page one and boom. There's the universe, all neat and tidy. It's more like a complex symphony that started with a single note, the singularity, and it's been building ever since, with each instrument, or physical law, if you will, adding its own layer to the composition. And let's be honest, the only people who claim we are saying magic did it are the same people who are desperately grasping at straws, trying to debunk the Big Bang. It's like playing cosmic whack-a-mole, hammering down any scientific theory that pops up, all while ignoring the mound of evidence piling up against them. If we live in a universe where things are tending towards disorder, how did we get order in the first place? This age-old question. If the universe is such a hot mess, how did we end up with something that resembles, well, not a complete dumpster fire, like Matt's arguments. It's like asking how a room full of monkeys with typewriters somehow ended up writing Shakespeare, except the monkeys are subatomic particles and Shakespeare is, well, you know, the entire cosmos. The universe has got this thing called entropy, which is basically the cosmic version of your teenager's messy bedroom. And you'd think with entropy running the show, we'd all be floating in a chaotic soup of randomness. But no. The universe also has a set of stage managers, gravity, electromagnetism, and nuclear forces that keep things from going full on Woodstock, 1969. And so these are three big issues with the Big Bang Theory. And I think it should be rejected by the scientific community. I don't think it has any logical basis. Look, let's just cut to the chase. The only reason you want the scientific community to reject those theories is that they're like a cold splash of water on the dreamy fantasy you've cocked up. Each point, even if the first two are basically identical twins, undermines your wishful thinking that God did it. You see, wanting something to be true doesn't make it true. It's like wishing for a unicorn and then being surprised when a horse shows up instead. You can wish all you want that God just snapped his fingers and made the universe, but without evidence, you're basically chasing fairy tales. So Matthew, while you are busy yearning for a universe that fits with your narrative, the rest of us will be over here. You know, actually studying the evidence and trying to understand the real story. Because at the end of the day, wishful thinking might make for a comforting bedtime story, but it doesn't hold up in the cold light of scientific scrutiny. And that, my friend, is the hard truth you're going to have to face, sooner or later. And people that try to defend the Big Bang Theory will try to redefine the Big Bang as an expansion. They'll say, well, it wasn't really an explosion. It was just an expansion. This really annoys me with people who claim that God did it. They know what the Big Bang says about the formation of the universe, and yet they still try to claim otherwise. They are no better than flat earthers, if you ask me. It's, it's the same thing. They are making claims that are impossible to substantiate. You can claim the earth is flat or that God made the earth, but nothing will ever happen to prove 
prove your position is the right one, no matter what you do or say. But the Big Bang Theory states that the universe went from the size of an atom to the size of our entire universe, our known universe in a trillion trillionth of a second. Oh, the exasperation is palpable. To set the record straight, shall we, pal? The Big Bang is not like hitting the pause button on the universe's DVR. It started the expansion, and guess what? That expansion is still happening, like the world's longest drum roll. And as it expands, the universe is also continuing to cool down. And let's get into the nitty gritty. Within the first few minutes, yeah, temperatures and densities dropped enough for nuclear fusion to kick in. That's when the universe started cooking up its first elements. Hydrogen and helium. Fast forward to about 380,000 years later, and the universe had cooled down enough for atoms to form. So, if that's not an explosion, I don't know what is. Yeah, 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 we get it. You don't know what anything is. Unless, of course, it came from the Bible. This has got to be one of the stupidest videos of maths that I have ever seen. And the only reason they try to redefine it and say, well, it's an expansion, is just to make it sound like it's not as kooky as it really is. Ah, right, so we're sticking with the invisible Skyman theory. Always a classic. If you think that's the pinnacle of logical reason, then that I've got a bridge to sell you. It's not that people are redefining the Big Bang, it's that they're actually defining it correctly. It's called a rapid expansion because, well, that's precisely what it was. And let's talk evidence. We've got cosmic background radiation, redshift data, and a whole slew of other scientific findings that back up the Big Bang. So calling it a rapid expansion isn't some trendy rebrand, it's stating facts. So, young Matthew, if clinging to the invisible man did it theory is what you want to stick with, then go ahead. But don't be surprised when the rest of us, armed with evidence and logic, call it what it is. Wishful thinking at best and intellectual dishonesty at worst. And these people that want to make fun of Christianity and mock Jesus and mock the Lord God, and come out against Christianity and pretend like they have purpose in their life. You know, if the atheistic worldview is true, and if the Big Bang is true, then what is the meaning of life? Exactly. This is not about mocking religious beliefs. It's about asking for intellectual honesty. It's like asking a magician to finally reveal how his trick is done. We're not saying give up your faith. We're saying acknowledge the evidence. And yeah, while it might be a pipe dream to expect a sudden epiphany from the God did it gang, a person can hope, right? And why does life need to have a meaning? Now I can only speak for myself here, but I'm just glad I have a life. And in my humble opinion, that should be more than enough for any of us. They might say, well, the meaning of life is whatever I assign to it. So I give myself meaning. Well, that's a circular argument because you're saying that the, the reason that you're alive and that the reason that there's reason to living is because I say there's a reason to living. So therefore, there's a reason to living. Oh, the irony is delicious. Mwah. Googling examples of circular arguments and finding religious texts at the top of the list is like searching for examples of irony and finding this conversation between me and Matt. The Bible proving the Bible's authority is the epitome of a circular argument. It's like saying I'm right because I say I'm right. Well, case closed everyone, pack it up. And let's talk about that lack of independence evidence part, shall we? If a circular argument was a cake, that would be the missing ingredient that makes it fall flat. So Matt, when you bring up circular arguments, you're not just stepping on a rake, you're doing a full on face plant into it. Sharp end up. The Bible says that the fool has said in his heart there is no God, and foolish people come up with foolish ideas. Well, I never thought I would hear myself say this, but on this occasion, it would seem that the Bible is right. Foolish people clearly do come up with foolish ideas, don't they, Matthew? And as a great man once said, who is the bigger fool? The fool or the fool who follows him? What film is that from? Tell me in the comments below. So those are the three main issues with the Big Bang. These are unanswerable questions um, in any debate or discussion that I've ever ended up in. The atheist has always ended up in a chokehold by these questions, not because I'm so logical or I'm so good at debating, but because these questions are just so powerful and they show 
that their worldview is absolutely pathetic and ridiculous. Ah, right, okay, name calling, I'm at. Always the sign of a well rounded argument. If you're resorting to calling people ridiculous or foolish, it's like admitting you've run out of logical ammo. And let's be honest, that doesn't exactly align with the whole love thy neighbor ethos, does it? Now imagine posing those questions to an astrophysicist. You would get answers so comprehensive they'd make your head spin faster than a neutron star. And as for your debate, in skills, Matt. Well, let's just say you're not exactly the Socrates of our time. You're more like that guy in a bar who thinks yelling louder makes him right. One of the things that they constantly do, and you'll see this on every little avatar that they have out there, they always have a fantasy name for themselves. Really? So are you saying my name isn't Creaky Blinder? Ha! Well, joke's on you then, Matt, because my real name is actually... So now we all know. Does Matt genuinely believe that God did it or is he just sticking to that line because it's part of his brand? It's like asking if a magician really believes in magic or just loves the art of illusion. Either he's genuinely convinced or he's playing a role because he thinks he has to. I know which one I think it is. Either way, it doesn't make his arguments any more valid. So whether Matt Powell is a true believer or whether he's just playing the part, the evidence for the Big Bang remains the same. Strong, supported, and much like the universe itself, ever expanding. Love you, bye. Not you though, Matt, you know. All right, all right, watch this next. But before you do, make sure you subscribe. By order of the creaky blinder.